Attention is important in almost everything we do, from tying a shoelace to learning to read or even crossing the street. Without the ability to pay attention, our world would be a jumble of images and sounds. <laughs> Try this experiment. On the screen, there is an image. Pay close attention as it flickers. Do you notice anything changing? Now, look at the lower left corner of the screen. You should see a man's pants changing colors. In this case, your brain wasn't aware of the color change until you directed your attention to the right location. Now imagine what it's like for a child in a classroom. Is everyone doing okay? Yeah. If Jane's attention is not focused in the right place, she can be completely unaware of important instructions or information. When Jane focuses her attention on something specific, her brain produces a bigger response to what she is focusing on. Attention actually changes how her brain responds. While we typically think of attention as a single thing, there are actually different kinds of attention. These different kinds of attention are associated with different brain areas, use different chemicals, and develop at different times in our lives. These three aspects of attention include orienting our attention, maintaining our attention, and controlling or regulating our attention. One of the earliest attention skills to develop is the ability to orient or move attention from one thing to another. One of the brain areas most involved in this is the parietal lobe, this aspect of attention is not developed at the time of birth. In fact, newborns have particular difficulty orienting their attention during the first four months of life. During this time, when a child is distressed, her attention is difficult to redirect. However, parents and caretakers should not be alarmed. This stage of attention development is completely normal. To ease their growing pains, newborns should be held and gently rocked so that their distress can peacefully subside. Shaking toys or stuffed animals won't work as their attention can't be distracted or forced into compliance. However, in a few months, as this skill develops, caregivers will notice that they can soothe their children in different ways. During the first few years of life, a different attention skill is beginning to develop the ability to stay awake and alert, which is regulated by structures deep inside the brain, as well as frontal and parietal areas of the cortex. These areas of the brain mature and adapt as young children develop healthy patterns of wakefulness and rest. The normal development of these patterns will help infants sleep through the night, as well as stay alert for longer periods of time while awake. As children get older, they will gain the ability to sustain their attention for longer and longer amounts of time. This aspect of attention continues to develop at least through 10 years of age. Finally, the third type of attention is the ability to regulate attention and control impulses. When children are around two years of age, they experience what could be considered a mismatch in development. Their motor and language skills allow them to move, talk, and interact, but their ability to regulate their attention is just beginning to emerge. Parents are familiar with the inconsolable frustration, crying, thrashing, and yelling typical of children of this age. This is why some people label the toddler years the terrible twos. However, the word terrible is somewhat misleading as this is a completely natural phase of development. During this time, children are beginning to use their attention to develop patience, to control their emotions, and to direct their focus. During this relatively short period of time, it is important for parents and teachers to treat children with patience and understanding while they struggle with this ability. When a child has an outburst, try not to respond with anger. Instead, check with your child about the emotions and feelings behind the outburst. If your child is too upset to talk, you may need to allow a cooling off period. Make sure she is physically safe and after your child has calmed down, a conversation can begin. The most extreme displays of the terrible twos usually dissipate by the time a child is four years old. 
Many aspects of attention actually continue to develop into the second decade of life. But you might be wondering, if all these behaviors are normal, how do I know if my child has an attention deficit? The media bombards us with so many conflicting stories about attention problems in children that it's hard to separate myth from fact. Let's take a look at the facts. Right now, between 3 and 5 percent of children in the United States are diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. An ADHD diagnosis is based on observing specific behaviors in children, for example, the inability to sit still, or difficulty ignoring distractions. But, as we saw earlier, all children show these symptoms to some degree. What sets ADHD apart is that the symptoms are persistent and occur in multiple settings, school and home, for example. And it's important to realize that even though a child can sustain his attention while watching a movie or playing video games, he might still have difficulty controlling his attention in other settings. If you suspect a child may have ADHD, it is important to open the lines of communication between parents and teachers as well as between different teachers at a child's school. Hi, Mrs. Charney. This is Michelle Griffin, Ashley's homeroom teacher. Also, try to determine whether she is inattentive only during certain activities, such as reading or math. This is important, as sometimes a child's difficulty is specific to reading or math, but can be confused for a general attention deficit. If you still think that your child might have ADHD, talk to your doctor or school psychologist so that your child can get the appropriate care. It's very easy for us as adults to form unrealistic expectations for what a young child's attention skills should look like. It's important to remember that things that bother us, crying, late night awakenings, even temper tantrums, are actually a normal part of every child's attention development. That said, parents and caregivers can also consider ways to support a child's developing attention skills. When newborns are distressed, hold and rock them gently allowing plenty of time for their distress to be soothed. Maintain regular bedtimes to help children develop normal sleep schedules. If a child has trouble focusing in school, ask if she can be moved to the front of the classroom where distractions may be less likely. Observe their attention skills in different social settings and their engagement in different activities. Talk to the child, teachers, and parents to discover how she's developing. Finally, Provide children with opportunities to make the most of their developing attention skills. Be creative. Introduce activities that allow children to pay attention for longer periods of time, to control their bodies and behaviors, and to notice small details in the world around them. Infants don't come into the world ready to sit still and listen. They need time to develop these abilities. When infants and children are given the time, opportunity, and environment for attention to develop, they'll be developing a set of skills that they will use to help them learn throughout their lives. Being patient and supportive is a powerful way to encourage children's attention and learning. Mm -hmm.